it's a whole bunch of one persons that make a difference. If enough individuals do make their small monthly donation, that can make for a sustainable network. Last week, Canadian media giant Can West Media Works dropped its lawsuit against Mordecai Breenberg for his role in the creation of a parody of one of Can West's newspapers, the Vancouver Sun. The parody criticized what its authors see as a decidedly pro-Israel bias at the newspaper chain. Can West maintains its lawsuit against two others involved in the parody. And joining us today to discuss the case is Mordecai himself. Mordecai is a radio host, a, a writer, and retired professor. He joins us now from his home in Vancouver, Canada. Welcome, Mordecai. Thank you very much for having me. So first of all, Mordecai, uh, let us know why, why they dropped the case against you, uh, just quickly, and then uh, why they're maintaining it against the, your, the other two people involved in this. Well, I think they've dropped the case against me because uh, they have been uh, embarrassed by the amount of support that we have received. Uh, people recognize that what was produced was a parody, that it's legitimate free speech. People like civil liberties organizations in British Columbia and Quebec, teachers organizations, Canadian librarian organizations, trade unions. Just in terms of factual basis, um, your, your defense, I believe, was that you actually had nothing to do with it, and they had no evidence that you did, and then dropped the case against you, right? That is correct, but they had that evidence months and months ago. And uh, they even had the evidence of the people who did produce it coming forward in July, four months ago, and didn't drop the case at that time. So we have to look at other things than that they're looking for evidence. Your contention is they've grouped you in uh, with the other, other two involved in this case because you're a well-known, uh, you speak very loudly on the question of what you see as uh, one-sided pro-Israeli coverage and, and, and such kinds of questions, right? Yes, indeed. Uh, I am a public figure. I've organized meetings, events, etc. And uh, my uh, commitment to Palestinian human rights and upholding international law in terms of uh, Israeli violations of them uh, is very, very well known. And that I Let, think let's get let's I just have. so let our viewers that don't know anything about this story, uh, let's show them what the front page looked like, and and we're going to uh, cut to that now. And so, as you can see, the, the, on, a, on a first quick look, one can see the, the masthead of the Vancouver Sun. And, uh, and, and I guess if you look at it just very quickly, it would look like any Vancouver Sun did. Looking at the front page, as you can see, in the, if you zoom in a little bit on it, you'll see seriously Zionist uh, since 2001. Uh, over to the uh, right, it says uh, Occupation Day, June 2007. Uh, the headline there is the uh, the Israeli military has had an impact on the occupied territories, but it's all positive. Uh, if you go down a little lower, there's a, an article down we, down below it says study shows truth biased against Israel, and it does this kind of mock interview between truth and the journalist. Well, the the tone of it clearly is a. I think a parody, one would understand it's a parody once you start to read, uh, look at any of this. At the very top of the masthead, over above the date, uh, it says uh, Israel in the shape of uh, uh, the Intel logo. Uh, the, so I guess that's because Intel buys so many, uh, so many ads. Uh, and uh, it says, under, it says, instead of Intel, it says Israel, and under that it says apartheid inside. Uh, then it says, what's inside your computer? And I guess they might be looking for a, a logo lawsuit here from Intel. Mordecai, has Intel sued anybody yet for, <laughs> for their logo? <laughs> no. no they At any rate, so, so, so I, I think it's pretty clear that as soon as you read it, uh, this is, has to be a parody and, and, and is an exaggeration. And I guess Can West's case will be as if you, don't, if you read it just very quickly, somehow you won't know it's a parody. Uh, so... so to start with, or to go a little further, why don't you tell us, what do you, what the, and as you understand the legal case, what does the Vancouver Sun, Can West, have to prove to prove this is a trademark violation? And I don't know if I've said that yet, let's make it clear. The, the, the people that remain charged are charged with violating the Vancouver Sun's trademark, not with libel. Uh, so to make yeah, a trade this case, what do they have to prove? Well, to say that something's false or a counterfeit, it would be like uh, you have a, a Nike swoosh uh, on a, on a uh, runner. You've taken it to, uh, to an outlet. Uh, you're selling it as though it's an authentic 
swoosh, you're asking for the money that the people would uh, normally have to pay for that, and you're making money off of it. That's what that's what a fake or counterfeit uh, uh, use of trademark is all about. It's protecting commercial interest. In this case, the paper was distributed freely. In this case, it's evident that though it refers to the Vancouver Sun and wants to remind people about the Vancouver Sun, obviously the things you have pointed out show that it is making fun of the Vancouver Sun. You know, Izzy Asper, the founder of CanWest, once complained that his parents lacked a sense of humor and didn't appreciate him sufficiently because of that. I, I wonder if he were still alive today what he would say about the sense of humor of uh, his children who run Can West and don't seem to be able to note the difference between a parody and a counterfeit. I guess from Can West's point of view, the argument will be uh, this will make Can uh, look as if Vancouver Sun's really saying these things. And I guess the people on your side are saying they're just trying to close down dissent and, and, and the issue of critiquing Israel and, and, and the whole role, way Israel's played in the media in Canada and for that matter, the United States. Uh, generally is uh, one-sided. Uh, so talk a bit about what, why this campaign has started and why has this become a, a civil liberties issue? It's become a civil liberties issue because people acknowledge right away that it is a parody and parody is a cherished form of, uh, of free speech. And under the Charter we do have a right to free speech. And here we have a very large corporation trying to use its, uh, its weight, its millions and billions of dollars to silence criticism of the kind of coverage it gives. So not only is Ken West on the one hand saying in our papers all of the writing will be pro-Israel, that's what Izzy Asper claimed that his paper was, the most pro is newspapers were the most pro-Israel in Canada. That's not quite the same as saying all your writing has to be pro-Israel. Do we have some kind of media study looking at the content of Ken, uh, Ken West Media yes. and is in fact it all pro-Israel? In fact, uh, there was a study done by an organization called the Near East Cultural and Educational Foundation of Canada comparing uh, the reporting of the deaths of children, uh, Jewish-Israeli children compared with Palestinian children. And it is comparing the Toronto Star, the Globe and Mail, and the uh, uh, National Post, uh, National Post being the Can West publication, you would get the impression from the Can West publication that, that a higher number, a hugely higher number of uh, Jewish-Israeli children were killed uh, as compared with Palestinian children, whereas in fact the, the reverse is the truth. And they exaggerated that by their style of reporting much more than did uh, the Star and the Globe and Mail, both of which also overestimated in their uh, style of reporting uh, the deaths of Jewish Israeli children compared with Palestinian. The, uh, the case now moves ahead against the two of the people that actually, if I understand it, there's not a, they're not saying that they didn't produce this parody. Uh, you, you said you didn't, and the case against you was dropped. But the other two, I think, admittedly, had, did produce the parody, and the question is, is it a parody or not? Is that correct? It, they, they're not disputing the fact that they were behind it. No, no, no. They came forward and said, we two people... Gordon Murray and Carol Moseyevich produced this. We have a right to produce it. We produced it because this uh, uh, reporting is so biased and distorted and it's outrageous and Canadians are not getting an accurate Im information about what's happening in the Middle East. So they decided to do a satire. Okay, in the next segment of our interview, let's discuss a little further uh, the, the whole issue of media coverage of Israel and the whole question of media concentration in Canada. Please join us for the next segment of our interview with Mordecai Breenberg. This is the sort of thing we can build right now without anyone else's permission from the government or from the business community. It's the powers in our hands. If we're not going to sleepwalk into more wars and into environmental disaster, we think we need to start with a television news network that won't bow to pressure and has the courage to seek facts. And that means independent economics. And that's why we need you. Real hope means facing a complex reality. 
Your tax-deductible donation makes it possible. Please contribute. Visit therealnews.com.